You don't want your gaming room sounding like this. You don't want any room sounding like this. You want it to sound more like this. And in the past, a lot of people have been asking me, can you soundproof a room using acoustic foam? And usually the answer is no, because most of the time when you're looking to soundproof a room, you're wanting to soundproof a room for outside noise coming in. And that's not really what a acoustic foam is, is for. Now, this video is going to kind of flip it on its head because I'm gonna show you the cheapest, most budget way to soundproof a room for gamers, whether you're the gamer screaming, annoying everybody else, or you're the person being annoyed, wanting to soundproof this room. We're gonna do it a little bit differently than just soundproofing a room because we need acoustic foam to soundproof this room. We need to deaden the sound. That's the first thing that we're going to do deaden the noise and then we're gonna seal a little bit of the cracks around the room. I'll show you exactly where, where one that you might not even ever have thought of. And also I'll tell you about products to avoid because some products are being pushed by the gaming community and it's just cost, it'll just cost you a lot more than, well, let's just start there. Acoustic foam. There's basically four different thickness of acoustic foam. There's one inch to four inch thickness of acoustic foam panels, but some people are recommending something called gaming acoustic foam panels or gaming acoustic. It doesn't really matter. If the word gaming is in front of it, it's going to jack the price. Is it going to work? Yeah, it's going to work, but it's not going to work that much better than acoustic foam that you can get for a lot cheaper. Now there's four different types of thickness of acoustic foam. I've got a one inch and the two inch. Now the one inch is just a little bit cheaper than the two inch. I would avoid using the three inch and the four inch. Yes, they'll work better, but they are considerably more expensive. And in my opinion, if you're filling the room up with the two inch, you'll be fine. You'll be happy with the results. If you fill it up with the one inch, you'll still have good results in sound deadening, but just not as good as the two inch, because as you can see right between the little rivets there, there's not that much thickness of foam. So it, it'll just let the sound waves pass through a little bit easier than using the two inches which will absorb them a lot better. So we changed locations because the easiest and cheapest way to install acoustic foam on your wall is to use spray glue. Yeah, but you're probably wondering, okay, well if I use spray glue, isn't it gonna do this on my wall? Yes, it will. It'll completely destroy your wall, you'll have to scrape that off if you ever want to remove it. If you go on Google and you ask Google how to install acoustic foam on the wall or ceiling, it'll just tell you to go ahead and use spray glue and then attach it to the wall. What they don't tell you is it leaves a huge mess and you'll be quite disappointed if you need to remove it in a few years. So the way to actually do it correctly and to be able to still use this spray glue because it makes things a lot easier. Buy one of these for 20 bucks. You just need maybe a couple of these cans to do your entire wall versus buying command strips. You see, if you just buy command strips, I would suggest you use two command strips per acoustic foam, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. Here's a trick. You want to spray the acoustic foam with the spray glue and then you want to attach it right on a cardboard. Yeah, cardboard. And then you place the cardboard on your wall using two, maybe four command strips. So you've just saved about half of the amount of command strips that you need just to use this. And also this makes it a lot easier to hang on to the ceiling. This is the way to do it, to, to really save you a lot of aggravation in the future. So what do you think of this? A lot easier to install acoustic foam once you've sprayed it onto cardboard. Now, how I'm gonna hang the acoustic foam is I'm gonna use these Velcro style command strips. Some people would say that you only need one per sheet, so we'll put it right here and you want to have the arrow facing down because if you ever want to remove this command strip, the way to remove it without damaging the wall is you lift this little tab and you lift it up slowly and that should not damage the wall. If you just rip it off quickly, then you'll probably damage the wall. And then you stick your other piece of command strip right onto the cardboard. Velcro it right on there. As you see, stays up very well and really you'd only need one command strip per four acoustic foam versus 
using two command strips for every acoustic form. So it makes quite a difference and it's quite a savings to you doing it this way. This is something that for some reason they just don't talk about. They just say, yeah, just use the spray stuff and stick it onto the wall and uh, it'll be great. Yeah, it'll be great if the room is always going to require acoustic foam. Sure, do it like that. But if you ever want to get rid of the acoustic foam, as I said, it'll be a big mess and you'll end up ruining your wall. And in the end, it'll cost you a lot more money than just buying a few of these buying some cardboard and then a few years later boom you can have your room back to normal here i am leaving a little bit of space for my corner base straps now corner base straps i could have left the cardboard a little bit wider it's basically up to you and stick this onto the cardboard if you know that that cardboard is going to be close to a corner a little trick that i think will save you a little bit of money is don't use anything when you have your cardboard stuck, you'll have another one stuck on the sidewall. Well, I don't even need it to just show you this little example. Stick it right in the corner. Just the pressure of the foam on foam, she'll be good to go. Now, the corner base straps, they're a little bit more expensive than your acoustic foam. Are they necessary? No, they're not. What you could do is just have your foam stuck right to the corner but you might have a little bit of a gap really it will look better and it might work a little bit better just to have the corner base straps they're not that much money really but they are a little bit more expensive and it is an extra purchase so it, it is something that you can either go or go without it's not going to make a huge difference in soundproofing uh, just as long as you have the acoustic foam really stuck together in the corner you should be fine but if you want a little bit extra and you don't mind paying a little bit more then i'd suggest buying some corner base strap and getting it done that way now once you've sound in the room using acoustic foam or before you do that you have to take care of this big glass section which is going to make the sound waves bounce around now if you have curtains that is quite hard quite you know not that great it's going to not work as good at absorbing the noise as these types of curtains, sound deadening curtains. Now sound deadening curtains are a lot thicker and they're a lot softer, they're more plush and they do a, a lot better job at absorbing noise. Now, a lot of people say that these are good to soundproof a window. They're not that good to soundproof a window because most of the time when you wanna soundproof a window, you're trying to stop noise from outside from coming in. It's not going to do a great job at blocking sound, but it's going to do a good job at absorbing the noise that's already in the room to make the room sound better. And that's your goal. You want to make the noise inside the room not sound as loud. And sound deadening curtains, also you can use blackout curtains, which is pretty well the same, can be more expensive or less expensive, but a lot of a lot of people sell sound deadening curtains as blackout curtains and vice versa. So as long as one of the two, then you'll know that it, it'll do a better job at absorbing noise. So these types, not these. So now that the walls and ceilings are mostly contained, the last little bits of sound deadenings that you want to do is the floor. Now, all you'll need to do is add an area rug. You can also buy moving blankets and add that. You can also add moving blankets onto the wall instead of using acoustic foam. It just won't look as good, of course. But if you do already have that, you can start there, see how that works, and then maybe move up to acoustic foam. Next thing that you'll want to do after you've sound deadened the room, you still have some noise escaping. Now you'll want to seal those gaps using acoustical caulking, but I don't really recommend acoustical caulking anymore because it gets expensive because of that word acoustic in front of it. One thing that I've used in the past and find that it works really well, it's a fraction of the price, it's called Red Devil Caulking. The reason why you want to use this type of caulking or acoustical caulking around, let's say your door, it stays rubbery over time. So all the vibrations, all of the footsteps around and the house moving, it will keep it from cracking, letting more noise out of the room. If you have a lot of noise bleeding out of the room, those walls in between rooms are typically not insulated. So people don't really think that an electrical outlet will let that much noise out of the room but if you're screaming then yeah electrical outlets you need to seal all around where the 
Basically, the electrical box meets the wall. There's a crack there. You can't really get behind it. If you can get behind that electrical outlet, then that's great. Use something called putty pads. Putty pads, it's made for more for a fire prevention, but it works great at blocking some of the noise because all of these electrical boxes has holes in them, so you want to seal those holes. But if you can't, if your wall is already completely finished, then just adding some caulking around the electrical outlet box, sealing that crack will work at reducing some of the noise getting out of the room. After the electrical outlet, you'll want to seal around the biggest hole in the room, letting most of the noise out of the room is the door. Now, the first thing that you'll want to do is add a door sweep. That big gap underneath the door, yeah, there's a lot of noise coming out. What you can do is add a door sweep, and what I would recommend is the U-shaped door sweeps, and to not glue it on or screw it onto the door. Because if you're just gaming for, let's say, a couple of hours a day, slide the door sweep right on it. It'll cover that hole and probably cover about 25 to 50% of the noise bleeding outside of the door. The reason why you want to use this type of door sweep is because when you restrict all of, when you seal a room that much, you're restricting a lot of the airflow. Just that crack you might not think, but there is airflow coming through in and out of the room and letting fresh air in. But the thing is, if you're just going to be gaming for a couple of hours a day, then that shouldn't really matter that much. Just slide it in and that'll cover that hole. And once you're done, you can just slide it out and then you have no restrictions of airflow entering or coming out of the room because of the door. Now, after you seal that gap on the door, really the only gap left is the gap around where the door meets the door frame. That little door frame sometimes has a gap. So what you can use is just use your caulking around that door frame, seal that up. And also if your door wobbles a lot, that means that there's probably noise coming in because your door doesn't shut that tight. To kind of close that gap, you'll want to add a certain type of thinner weather strip, like the one you see on your screen. If you just add that weather strip around where the door meets that frame, just make sure to clean it, it's dry, add your self-adhesive weather strips, and the door will close more tightly and a lot less noise will bleed out of the room. All right, so now that I showed you how to properly seal the door, it's now time to add some acoustic foam onto the door. You'll want to do the exact same thing as you did for the ceiling and the wall. You want to attach it right on the door and using a cardboard is the way to go and it won't damage the door. But you will want to add some completely all over the door and you might want to use a little bit more cardboard and cut a piece of acoustic foam just to make it so the entire door is full of foam and it'll just look good you should see a considerable difference of the amount of noise from the gaming room to the outside world. But if that is just not enough, if you need a little bit more soundproofing, but still keep it on budget or under budget, video right there will show you how to soundproof the room. But as I said, keep it under budget because there are some ways to do it without having to tear up the entire room and adding stuff into the wall. And I'll just stop right there. Go watch that video. Hopefully this video answered all of your questions. If you have questions, comment section below and I'll be happy to answer you. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.